So I want to I want to bring up one more thing before I get to the Panthers, which I was at the game on Saturday night, first ever Stanley Cup final game I've ever been at. So I was at the game on Saturday night, and and we'll get to that in a moment here. I mean, re really a, a great experience. We'll get, I'll get to it in a second. Everybody, calm down. I got one more thing with the Heat that that I want to bring up. That I want to mention. So during the game, or I guess it was halftime, right? Of game four, and the Heat are down by five. I think it was 53-40. No, no, 53-40. That was, that was the halftime score game three. I forget how much they were down by in game three, but didn't feel good about it. Anyway, so they go to that ESPN studio show, which stinks. It's amazing. Like, it's one thing for the for TNTs inside the NBA to be... And, like, it's an all-time show. Can't replicate it. Barkley, EJ, Kenny, Shaq. ESPN's never going to come close to that. But the... TNT NHL coverage is so much better than its NBA coverage. Anyway, they go to that godforsaken ESPN studio show, halftime show, and it's Greenberg and Will Bond and Stephen A. Smith, Jalen Rose. Sucks. Sucks. And and by the way, their halftime show is like two and a half minutes. It's all ads. They 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 talk for two and a half minutes. It's crazy. It's all commercials. So when it, and I'm not exaggerating. That that's that's the fact. So, Stephen A. Smith, I send out a tweet. The Heat are shooting 53%, and Stephen A. is talking about Struess and Vincent giving, not giving them anything. It's such bad analysis. Clueless. That's my tweet. At that time, Struess and Vincent were a total like 1 for 10 for like 2 points. And they finished the game something similar. They... They gave nothing. They couldn't hit anything. So I, I get a bunch of responses on Twitter. Stephen A was right. He is right. They're not doing anything. You're, you're missing the entire point of what I'm saying there. And maybe, maybe I just wasn't clear. Nobody is saying, certainly I'm not saying, that Struess and Vincent were good on Friday night. The point is... And I've made this point throughout the postseason. It's so easy to tell which analysts don't watch. It's so easy to tell which analysts just pick up the box score, look at it, and think that they know what happened in the game. And Stephen A. Smith has always been that guy. Stephen A. Smith is fantastic on television when he's an opinionist. When he's talking about stories. Stephen A. Smith as an analyst. Like he essentially is on the NBA Countdown show. And the studio show. Is awful. And he, he doesn't watch the games. I mean I've seen this at Heat playoff games. The game's going on. And he's hobnobbing in the media room not watching. I've seen this. He doesn't watch the games. He picks up the box score. Sees Vincent Struess, zero points at halftime. Need more from those guys. They're not holding up their end of the bargain. The Heat at halftime were shooting 53%. I mean, so is the answer that he'd have to shoot 65% to win the game? Anybody can pick up that box score at halftime, see Struess and Vincent had zero points, and get on television and say they need more from those two guys. If you're an analyst being paid millions of dollars, can you give me something that maybe I don't know? Can you show me something that maybe I'm not picking up on? Anyone can look at the box score and see a guy who is in the starting lineup who has zero points is not having a good game. And that's what Stephen A. Smith goes on my television and tells me. Like, it's, it's awful analysis. It's bullshit. That's the point that I was making. Obviously, Struess and Vincent weren't good. But that's the best you can give me? Struess and Vincent need to do more? Can you give me some kind of insight? You're there. You're at the game. That's the point. Maybe I wasn't clear with that. That's the point I'm trying to make there. Anyway. All right. So, you guys know I love sheets and giggles. If you need new... Well, forget if you need... Whatever bedding you're sleeping on right now, whatever sheets you're sleeping on right now, whatever comforter you're using, whatever pillow you're using, if it's not sheets and giggles, 
You're just saying to yourself, you know what? I don't care about sleeping better. You can sleep like a baby. And all you got to do is go to SheetsGiggles.com. Sheets and Giggles, where over 100,000 Americans are sleeping on Sheets and Giggles and sleeping better since they found this product. SheetsGiggles.com. Use promo code Zaslow at checkout. You'll get 20% off your first order. Super environmentally friendly. I never sleep better now since I've used Sheets and Giggles. Softer, cooler, more breathable. I got... You ever sleep on a eucalyptus pillow? I have a eucalyptus pillow now. SheetsGiggles.com. You're never going to shop anywhere else. That's where the Zaslow family goes now. We're never going to use any sheets outside of Sheets and Giggles for as long as we live. Well, my man Colin, the founder and CEO of Sheets and Giggles, huge Miami sports fan. He's a South Florida guy, St. Thomas Aquinas. But anyway, he came on down here. Came down for game four, Panthers nights, Stanley Cup final. He threw a little pre-party kind of deal at quarter deck in Sunrise. Got to meet a bunch of listeners. That was really awesome. Bunch of guys from the Levitard show were there. The Cody's, Greg Cody, Chris Cody, they were there. Israel Gutierrez stopped by. Thanks to everybody who came by and hung out with us. But most importantly, thanks to my man Colin and Sheets and Giggles. Colin and his father took me and my son Jordan to the game, to game four, Stanley Cup final on Saturday night. And thanks to Colin, my son, we didn't tell him he was going until about an hour before we left to go to the pre-party at quarter deck. I mean, he'd been begging to go to the Stanley Cup finals for weeks. He was so excited. And we had an, even though they lost, we had an all-time memory, an all-time night for the Zaslow boys, courtesy of my man Colin. And Sheets and Giggles. So, obviously, I'm super grateful for our partnership, Sheets and Giggles, on Zaslow Show 2.0. But forever grateful for the memory that he gave us. So, thanks again to Colin. Go to SheetsGiggles.com. That's the only place you want to shop for your bedding and for your sheets. We had a great time Saturday night game four, courtesy of Sheets and Giggles. Let me tell you this. That was our first, we sat in the upper deck. We were 13 rows, we were up high. We were the upper deck center ice. First time I've ever sat upper deck for a hockey game. Well, no, I probably did it in Miami Arena. First time I've ever sat upper deck for a Panther game at FLA Live Arena. First time ever. And by the way, you know I make fun. Joy Taylor Memorial Seats is when you're sitting way up top in the upper deck. There is no such thing as Joy Taylor Memorial Seats when we're talking about the Stanley Cup Finals. No such thing. You get in the building any way you can, and we all know the tickets are outrageous. First time I ever sat upper deck, Stanley, upper deck for a Panther game in FLA Live Arena. And I'll tell you something. I've told you this. I love my favorite seats for Dolphin games. First row upper deck. We sit first row upper deck behind the goal. Great seats. Love it. Very similar for hockey. You're sitting in the upper deck. Granted, I, I had to get used to the the dimensions, essentially. I, I, I had to, you know, when we first sat down in our seats, I had to essentially, you know, gather myself because, you know, I, I've told you this, I suffer from vertigo. I haven't had it in a while, but I, I, it's always on the periphery, you know. So I suffer from vertigo, and I had to kind of gather my bearings, and I was totally fine. And once that happened, once I gathered, you know, you know, got the perspective that I needed and all that, upper deck for hockey, great vantage point. I will absolutely sit in the upper deck for a Panther game again. The regular season, I will absolutely sit upper deck for a Panther game again. That is a great vantage point, especially if you're sitting center ice. Loved it. Loved it. Highly recommend. First time ever in the upper deck. Really tough loss, game four. Especially when you consider our biggest bugaboo the entire season. And our biggest bugaboo this postseason and this series has been what? Taking penalties. We took just one penalty. And we still lose that game. If you would have said beforehand, Zaslow, game four, Panthers will only take one penalty. And by the way, Vegas will be 0 for 1 on that penalty. 
do you like the Panthers' chances of winning? I would have said, yep, that's a 4-1 win. We win that game 4-1. Again, just like Denver with the Heat, Vegas is better than us. Now, it's different with hockey, where I still think the Panthers are in this. I do not believe they're done. It's not like the NBA. One game at a time. You could win low-scoring games even when you're not the better team. One game at a time. And if you can get to game six, just like the Heat, if you can get to game six, it's on again. I do not believe the Panthers are done. And the Panthers, I mean, Vegas, they must have been playing angelic hockey. The only penalty that they took was a delay. Not even something physical. It was a delay with 17 seconds left. So we got to finish the game six on four. Which is a shame because (coughs) you saw there right at the end before the melee. We had a great chance six on four. Couple great chances. For Hagee with a one-timer which was saved. And then the scrum right outside the crease. If we got that penalty with more than 17 seconds, we had a shot. We really did. Just like in game three, to score with the empty net. I I can't complain, though. And and look, they were down 3-0. That was a killer. The the goal that was really the killer was 90 seconds in, and they score on the breakaway. It's like, the Panthers, they they didn't come out to play at the first couple minutes because after they were down one nothing like the Panthers played well enough to win that game I thought the Panthers outplayed Vegas in a game they were down three nothing I thought we outplayed them I thought we outplayed them in the first period I thought we outplayed them in the third period that second period was obviously a disaster where we give up two more goals but that first goal 90 seconds into the game like the start of the game that was the killer that was the killer but man the crowd was so into it when Barkov scored, we cut it 3-2. Like, it felt like it was happening again. Kachuk's hurt. He missed time in the third. He came back out to finish the game. So we'll see what he's like tomorrow night. I do believe the Panthers are still in it. But I, I do want to add a couple things. All right? And this is some negative stuff. Which is not directed at the Panthers. It's directed at the Panther fan. I, I, I got to put this out there. All right. So, a couple things. Number one, as if it's not bad enough in the regular season, yelling night during the national anthem, it's bad enough in the regular season, it's outrageously stupid in a series against the Knights. Why would you yell night when we're playing The Knights, who we learned also do that, their home games, which of course makes all the sense in the world that the Knights fans would yell night during the national anthem of their home games. Why would we do that during the Stanley Cup finals against the Knights? And then when you consider, uh, so if some of you are out there, why do the Panthers fans say it? It's for Spencer Knight. Spencer Knight is practically not on the team. Stop yelling Knight during the national anthem. Or we yell red, you know, and the Rockets red glare. That's fine. It's cool. Red, that's the Panthers color. Yell it. Spencer Knight is practically not even on the team. He's done nothing for this team. If anything, he's been a big disappointment. But I don't even want to get into that part. He's done nothing for this team. Maybe he will in the future. We could still hold out hope for that. But as far as play on the ice, he's done nothing. And he and he hasn't been with the team for half the year. He's literally away from the team. He's practically not on the team. Stop yelling night during the national anthem. It looks so bad. And here's the second thing, which is also a really bad look. You know, it's low-hanging fruit. But this kind of stuff only adds to it. That the South Florida sports fan, the Miami sports fan, that we suck. We're not good sports fans. I love 1996. I love the year of the rats. I love throwing the rats on the ice after the game. That's our thing. After a win. 
after a win. That's our thing. But throwing the rats on the ice after the Panthers score, which we did after the first or second goal, you're going to get us a penalty. That's what's going to happen. We're going to get a delay a game penalty when you do that. Throwing the rats on the ice, a stoppage of play, is stupid. It makes us look bad. And then, after the game, when we have this, me this melee, throwing the rats on the ice, and throwing some garbage on the ice, too. It's embarrassing. Like, the Panther fan who is throwing stuff on the ice during the melee after we lost... Like, I'm talking directly at you. You make us look bad. That was, that was an embarrassing moment. And the rest, like, the really highbrow hockey fan, especially the Canadian hockey fan, this is why they shouldn't have a team. And that stuff's unfair. It is. But you only add fuel to that fire. You come off, I'm talking directly to the Panther fan who throws garbage on the ice after we lose. You come off as, you make us... You make me, I was at the game. You make me come off as a low rent hockey fan. You make me look bad. And it's embarrassing throwing shit on the ice after we lose. So those Panther fans who brought shit with them and you have to throw it on the ice so you do it after the game when we lose, in a melee, you embarrass other Panther fans. You make us look bad. In a sport where... The Northeasterners and the Canadians want to raise their nose at us. You make us look bad. That part pisses me off. I don't think they're done, though. So tomorrow night, game five, let's go. Let's win one. That's all it takes. Win one. Tonight, let's go. Win one. That's all it takes. Thanks again, Sheets and Giggles, for taking me and my son, my man Colin. Amazing. Amazing, amazing experience. Hey, if you want an easy experience when it comes to getting your homeowner's insurance, so lucky you're listening to Zaslow Show 2.0 right now. I use Brunt Insurance, bruntinsurance.com, 954-589-2204. I've been getting my homeowner's insurance through Brunt Insurance for about 10 years now. And since 2013, Brunt Insurance, they specialize not only in homeowner's insurance, auto, that's, that's your car, motorcycle, you need boat insurance. And wherever you're calling from, from Pensacola to the Keys and beyond, Brunt Insurance is delivering that comprehensive insurance and all and financial solutions tailored exactly to your needs. I don't have to go anywhere else when my when my insurance is up. I know I'm getting renewed through Brunt Insurance because I'm getting the most comprehensive, affordable care that's offered anywhere. I don't have to worry, God forbid something happens that maybe this part of my home is not covered because since Brunt Insurance knows the entire state, number one insurance agency in the entire state of Florida, top five in the country. So wherever you're calling from in Florida, they know, I mean, Greg Brunt and his team, they know exactly the area you're calling from, fully licensed staff. You're going to be covered top to bottom, no issues. Can't just go online. The market's super confusing. You're not going to get everything that you need. So you go to bruntinsurance.com or call 954-589-2204, bruntinsurance.com, 954-589-2204. So of course, you know, tonight, we got the heat tonight, 8.30, looking to stay alive. You want to relax, you want to sit on your couch, have a drink, responsibly, you know we're talking about Johnny Cuba, the official beer of Zazlo Show 2.0. You can follow Johnny Cuba on Instagram, of course. I love posting the pictures when you guys send me a picture. You're trying a Johnny for the very first time. You pick up a six-pack at your local Sedano's, Presidente, Winn-Dixie. I love when you send me a picture. You're, you crack open a Johnny or give yourself a nice pour and a big, tall glass. No foam, all right? Good pour, only good pours. And you send me a picture... I'm an influencer on Instagram. I'll put it on Instagram. My man Juan, he loves when I do that. And then you're famous because I'm an influencer. Johnny Cuba loves it. The point is, if you want to relax, pick up yourself a six-pack of Johnny. Drink responsibly. And of course, don't forget Johnny Cuba's mantra. Stay tranquilo. Let's get to big deal or not a big deal. Every close of the show, we get to some topics that we haven't gotten to on the show yet. 
We tell you if it's a big deal or not a big deal. Hey, if you got water mold or fire damage in your home, that might be a big deal. Maybe it's not a big deal, but let's find out. Water cleanup of Florida, 954-900-8635, or go to WCUFL.com. They'll tell you if it's a big deal or not a big deal. Big deal or not a big deal. So, Friday night at the arena during, I think it was halftime maybe, or during one of the timeouts, Conor McGregor, he's doing like, like a commercial essentially for some new spray he's got going on. And he punches Bernie in the face, which was clearly planned part of the bit. He hit him really hard, sends Bernie down to the mat, and then another punch when he's on the ground. Now, I'm watching like, that was really hard that he hit him. Well, the guy who plays Bernie, he had to go to the ER. Now, apparently he's home, he's on pain meds, and he's doing just fine, which is great to hear. But this is a big deal. I mean, because there, there are a couple of confusing things that happened here. I mean, you got to point out a couple things that were super confusing, right? Number one, I don't understand what the bit was because, I mean, clearly McGregor is supposed to punch him out. He's Conor McGregor. He's got this spray, which he was then spraying on, you know, on the guy who was playing Bernie as he's being dragged off the floor. But, like, it wasn't like Conor McGregor was knocking out the Nuggets mascot. Why would we have Conor McGregor knock out Bernie in the middle of the game? That's, that's weird. And number two, you can't trust Conor McGregor, the maniac. He's a maniac and an unsafe person. And clearly a total asshole. Like, you can't trust Conor McGregor. So, that's a big deal. Glad Bernie's okay. Big deal or not a big deal. How about, you know, the Heat and Panthers are going to be done soon. And maybe it won't be the worst thing in the world to turn our attention to the Miami Marlins. The Marlins take two out of three against Chicago. After having won six in a row against Oakland and Kansas City, they win 6-5 yesterday as Brian De La Cruz gets a two-run double to take the lead in the top of the ninth. Back win. Ground ball. Fair ball. Down the line. Battle score, Davis. Birdie is racing towards third, and he's getting the green light. Stumbled a little bit around the bag, and he scores! Marlins take the lead. Heading toward third, and he gets there. Oh, baby! That's a big deal. The Marlins, they've won 8 and 9. They're 37 and 29. Yeah, maybe it won't be so bad to pay attention to the Marlins after our teams are done in the championship round. That's a big deal. Big deal or not a big deal? How about John Sterling, legendary radio voice of the New York Yankees? This was on Saturday afternoon. He was hitting the head with a foul ball. At the belt. Now the 3-2 swung on. A pop foul back here. Ow! 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 It really hit me. I didn't know it was coming back that far. So once again, it'll be a 3-2. And the 3-2 is grounded foul. That's a big deal. How about him trucking along, keeping it going? I mean, he's, he's like 90 years old and keeping it going despite getting jacked in the head with the foul ball. That's a big deal, John Sterling. Big deal or not a big deal. So here's Charles Barkley during, I guess it was a Panther game, game four, and he's being interviewed in the middle of the game or maybe it was halftime. He loves hockey. And he tells how Sabres forward Jack Eichel, I have Sabres. Formerly Sabres. Knights forward Jack Eichel. No idea who Barkley was. The last one for you then on that. Who's... No, I got to tell you okay. something. All right. So yesterday I was at the hotel. I walked up to Jack Eichel and said how great he was. I think he had zero idea who I was. <laughs> I did. He was at the hotel. We sat at the same hotel. I said, hey, Mr. Eichel, it's an honor. You're a great player. But he looked at me like, who the hell are you? It was pretty funny. Um, I'm going not a big deal. I mean, I... Jack Eichel doesn't have the best reputation. Like, maybe he's a jerk. I don't know. But, I mean, he's probably young. He he may be, like, 
He may not know much about the NBA, so I'm going not a big deal. And finally, big deal or not a big deal, Kevin Love, right after the game on on Saturday, or no, maybe it wasn't right after the game on Saturday, but he didn't take the team's flight to Denver on Sunday because his wife had a baby. So congrats, he's, he's back with the team. He, he got back to the team in time for all the you know film session, all that good stuff, and he should be good to go for tonight. Congratulations, Kevin Love and his wife on having a baby. That's a big deal. And that right there is another addition. Courtesy of Water Cleanup of Florida, 954-900-8635. Let Water Cleanup of Florida tell you if it's a big deal or not a big deal. All right. That's it. Tonight, I mean, can we start the show tomorrow with the Heat forcing a game six and... A Panthers game day looking to do the same thing? Can we get it tonight? Bunch of threes. It's going to be bombs away from Miami tonight. I really think so. That's how you win this game tonight. Thanks to everybody who hung out with us today. Make sure you like, you rate, you comment, you do all that good stuff. Thanks to everybody behind the scenes who all put together a great show today. You guys are awesome. We'll talk to you on Zaslow Show 2.0 tomorrow. Know what that means.